coming up in the morning? That's his point. No one can stop God from dealing with Israel as a people. No one. No one can stop him from raising up the Levites that, it, that Israel might have fellowship with God in the millennium. millennium. Not for a sin offering. Jews fellowshipping with their Messiah, the root of David. He goes on. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying, have you not considered what these people have spoken, saying, the two families which the Lord has chosen, he has cast them off? In other words, you've heard people, have you not listened to people who said that he's forsaken and never again deals with Israel and Judah? He has also cast them off? Thus says, uh, Thus they have despised my people as if they should no more be a nation before them. It's plain as it can be. God is dealing with Israel in the future. Thus says the Lord, if my covenant is not with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, then I will cast away the descendants of Jacob and David, my servant. So I will not take any of his descendants to be rulers over the descendants of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, for I will, I will cause their captivity to return and will have no mercy on them. Stop the sun from rising, stop the night from coming. That's the only way I'm going to turn my back on Israel. That ought to settle that question, shouldn't it? Hearing people saying we're going through a tribulation. Give me a break. He's talking to the Jews. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Uh, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord. When Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon and his, and his army. All the kingdoms of the earth under his dominion. And all the people fought against Jerusalem and all the cities saying. Now this is referring back to a prophecy that was given. Like 31st or 32nd verse. It digresses. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, go and speak to Zedekiah, king of Judah, and tell him, thus says the Lord, behold, I will give this city into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire, and you shall not escape from, the, from his hand, but shall surely be taken and delivered to his hand. Your eyes shall see the eyes of the king of Babylon. He shall speak with you face to face, and you shall go to Babylon. Do you think it made the king mad? He put him in jail for it. Yet, yet, hear the word of the Lord, O Zedekiah, king of Judah. Thus says the Lord concerning you, you shall not die by the sword. You shall die in peace, as in the ceremonies of your fathers, the former kings who are before you. So they shall burn incense for you and lament for you, saying, Alas, Lord, for I have pronounced the word says the Lord. And Jeremiah the prophet spoke of these words to Zedekiah king of Jerusalem. And when, king, and when the king of Babylon's army fought against Jerusalem and all the cities of Judah that were left in uh, Lachish and Hezekiah, for only these fortified cities remain cities of Judah, the last two cities left. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord after King Zedekiah had made a covenant with all the people who were at Jerusalem to proclaim liberty to them. That every man should set his male and female slave, a Hebrew man or woman, that no one should keep a Jewish brother in bondage. Now do you remember Leviticus 25 and 26, the rule that was given? If you sold yourself into slavery to pay a debt, if you were a Hebrew slave, your master had to let you go every seventh year. You were free, debt paid. And then every 50th year, the year of Jubilee. But they hadn't done that. Now they're in a jam. The walls are being breached. They're eating their kids. And now, all of a sudden, they decide, maybe we should let the slaves go. And Zedekiah, remembering 
what had happened earlier when the king humbled himself, called Isaiah there, and they humbled themselves, repented of their sins, and called out to God, and God sent an angel who killed 185,000 of their oppressors. He thought, what the heck? If all he wants is to let the slaves go, we'll do it. Now when all the princes and all the people who had entered into the covenant, they agreed with the king. Okay, king, if that'll stop this, we'll let the slaves go. Heard that everyone should set free his male and female slaves, that no one should keep them in bondage anymore. They obeyed and let them go. Now, let me tell you what's happening here, folks. They're in a jam. And because they're in a jam, they try to cut a deal with God. I don't know how many people I've seen that appear to come to God. Their husband and their wife, or their wife or their boyfriend or their girlfriend has left them. So they boohoo before God, come to church for the first time in six months, and then they say, God, if you'll give me them back, which God didn't want them to have to begin with. God, if you'll give me them back, I'll serve you with a whole heart. And then they come back and they are gone. They're just trying to cut a deal, man, to get out from under the situation they're in. 11th verse. But afterward, they changed their minds and made the male and female slaves return, whom they had set free and brought them into subjection as male and female slaves. Therefore, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I made a covenant with your fathers in that day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of the bondage, saying, At the end of seven years, let every man set his Hebrew brother who has been sold to him, and when he has served you six years, you shall let him go free from you. But your fathers did not obey me, nor incline their ear. Then you recently turned and did what was right in my sight. You let him go like you were supposed to. Every man proclaiming liberty to his neighbor. And you made a covenant before me in the house which is called by my name. Then you turned around and profaned my name. And every one of you brought back his male and female slaves whom you had set at liberty at their pleasure and brought them back into subjection to be your male and female slaves. In other words, you came in and tried to slicky me. You came in and said, oh God, I'll go your way. Make this go away. And then when you got, thought you got what you wanted, you went right back just like a pig goes to a hog trough and started doing it again. And then he tells them, and you're not getting away with it. Remember, God knows everything. Therefore, thus says the Lord, you have not obeyed me in proclaiming liberty, every one to his brother and every one to his neighbor. Behold, I proclaim, you want liberty? I'll give you liberty to do something. I proclaim liberty to you, says the Lord, to the sword, the pestilence, and to the famine. You think you're going to get out of this deal? You're going to get liberty? Here's what I'm going to give you. A sword, pestilence, and all the stuff you feared. And I will deliver you to among all the kingdoms of the earth. And I will give the men who have transgressed my covenant, who have not performed the words of the covenant which they made before me, when they cut the calf in two and pressed between the parts of it. Oh, what's he talking about? Do you remember when God dealt with Abraham and God told Abraham he was going to make a covenant to him? And Abraham spent all day he assembled the animals. He cut them in half because the custom was that when the lesser person makes an oath, a covenant oath, a blood oath, to the greater person, presumably the king, he cuts the animals in half and he sets half the animal on one half of a path and half the animal on the other half of the path. And then the one to whom the promise is made, stands at the end of the path, and the one making the promise walks down the path and says, this is what I'm going to do and I promise to do, and if I don't do it, 
may what happened to these animals happen to me. But in Abraham's case, Abraham spent all day trying to shoo away animals, trying to eat the animals he'd slaughtered. And he got so exhausted, he fell asleep. And God showed up, and he didn't stand at the end of the path. He walked through it and made the promise to Abraham. The Messiah promised to pay the price for the covenant not being kept. That doesn't send chills up your spine. It's in Genesis. Read it. That's what he's talking about. You guys cut the calf. You made an oath to me. And then you reneged. The princes of Judah, the princes of Jerusalem, and the eunuchs, and the priests, and all the people of the land who passed between the parts of the calf you all made the covenant with me. I will give, uh, give them into the hand of their enemies and into the hands of those who seek their life. Their dead bodies shall be for meat for the birds of, the, of heaven and the beasts of the earth. And I will give Zedekiah king of Judah and his princes into the hand of their enemies, into the hand of those who seek their life, and into the hand of the king of Babylon, ar Babylon's army, which has gone back from you. Behold, I will command, says the Lord, and cause them to return to this city, and they will fight against it and take it and burn it with fire, and I will make the cities of Judah a desolation without inhabitant. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the days of Jehoiakim. Now remember, that was the son of Josiah, this is talking about the prophecy from days past. The son of Josiah, the king, uh, the king of Judah, saying, Go to the house of the Rechabites. Now this is a people, this is the only place we hear about them. And he's going to make a comparison. Go to the house of the Rechabites. Speak to them and bring them into the house of the Lord, into, the, into one of the chambers, and give them wine to drink. Then I took Jeazaniah, the son of Jeremiah, the son of Habazaniah, the brother of all the sons and the whole house of the Rechabites, and thank God, as hard as that is to pronounce, they never mention them in Scripture again. And I brought them into the house of the Lord and into the chamber of the sons of Hanan and the sons of Igdala, a man of God, which was by the chamber of the princes above the chamber of Maasai, and son of Shalim, the keeper of the door. And then I set before the sons of the house of the Rechabites bowls of wine and cups, of, and, cups and I said to them, drink wine. And, but they said, we will drink no wine. For Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, commanded us, saying, you shall drink no wine, you nor your sons forever. You shall not build a house, sow seed, plant a vineyard, nor have any of these, but all your days you shall dwell in tents, that you may, uh, that you may live many days in the land where you were sojourners. Thus they obeyed the voice of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, in all that, that he charged us not to drink wine all the days of our, of our, uh, all of our days. We, our wives, and our sons, and our daughters. Let me paint the picture a little clearer, okay? Because this seems like, okay, so what's this got to do with anything? These are a nomadic people, like the Bedouins. And they exist in Israel today. They refuse to live in houses. The government of Israel built houses for these people, and they refuse to live in them. The houses sit vacant. They live in tents, and they don't drink wine. Why? Because an ancestor, eons ago, gave them an instruction that said, live in your tents, don't drink wine, don't build houses. And they have honored their ancestor, their ancestral father, 
with his directions even until today. Now, why does God bring this up? Ninth verse. Nor to build ourselves houses or dwell in, nor do we have vineyard, field, or seed. They planted no crops. Today they plant no crops. They're mainly shepherds. But we have dwelt in tents and have obeyed and done according to all that Jonadab, our father, commanded us. But it came to pass when Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, came up into this land that we said, come, let us go into Jerusalem for fear of the army of the Chaldeans and for fear of the army of the Syrians. So we dwell in Jerusalem. Then came the word of the Lord to Jeremiah, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Go and tell the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Will you not receive instruction and obey my word, said the Lord? He's about to give them an object lesson. He's saying, You heard that these people honored what they were told by an ancient ancestor and they kept it right up to that day when they were destroying Jerusalem and even till today. But he tells the people of Judah, you don't listen to a word I say. The words of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, which he commanded his sons not to drink wine, are performed. For to this day they drink none and obey their father's commandment. But although I have spoken to you, rising early and speaking, you did not obey me. They believed an earthly ancestor and they kept his word. I'm God and I spoke to you and you ignore me like I'm nobody. I have also sent to you all my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them saying, turn now everyone from his evil way, amend your doings, and do not go after other gods to serve them. Then you will dwell in the land which I have, which I have given you and your fathers. But you have not inclined your ear nor obeyed me. Surely the sons of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, have performed the commandment of their father, which he commanded them.